Hello everybody and welcome to this week's episode of Jane Hour. We're your hosts, Maddie, Maya, Aubrey, Lindsay, Rose. And on this week's episode, we're talking about everything we did at the last one. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Mm -hmm. Who do you want to start with? Power or place? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Gates Head is a starting spot that we meet up with Jane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's her... Is it her aunt? Is Mrs. Reed her aunt? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's her aunt's house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And in the first few chapters is the Red Room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, stays as a theme throughout the entire book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Red Room is something she definitely carries with her through mm -hmm. everything. Right, it was her first supernatural experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of is how much it's like the power of the place. So she carries that place throughout her whole life and that's what the power of the place is kind of in a way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like. It's like a the, place has a power to follow you wherever you go, even mm -hmm. if you're not in that place. And I think that that's, like, the most powerful place, because, you know, it, the book starts off with it, and it just keeps coming back up as, like, a major, like, event in her life, and it was just, like, trauma for her. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it, it also refers back to child disempowerment, where she was forced to be in that room mm -hmm. and locked there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it says on 16 that the Red Room was a spare chamber, very seldom slept in, but it proceeds to say it was one of the, like, the stateliest chambers in the whole mansion, and, like, the largest. Mm. And it, then it talks about, like, the deep mahogany colors and just how everything's so dark and stately, and, yeah. and it's just, and it says this room was, was chill, and it seldom had a fire, and it was silent, yada, yada, yada. And it's just, I don't know, that just gives me such a dark and trapped type of Pretty, a feeling. Yeah. Very gothic. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. And, like, the thing is, like, in almost every chapter, she always describes a place. Mm hmm So it does have, like, a huge impact on the entire plot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think the red room prevented her from being herself. Mm -hmm. Like, in a mm -hmm. way, because she was locked out from the world and she was trapped with the, the her imagination mm -hmm. in a bad way and she couldn't control it. Mm -hmm. She had no control over it. And I think that that can compare to um, instances later on in the book. Mm -hmm. And that's why she compares it to the Red Room often because it gives her, like, circumstances farther on give her the same feeling that the Red Room did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think her being uh, shut up in the Red Room so much um, is definitely where you start to see how she, like, has that um, struggle with power versus reason. And, like, she's, like, she has passion, or and passion, sorry, passion versus reason. And she wants to, like, be herself, or she wants to do this or that or the other thing, but she, from mm -hmm. being locked up in the Red Room, she yeah. was kind of shut off. It was almost like she talked, because she talked herself out of the supernatural experience that happened there. Mm -hmm. And she continued to do that mm -hmm. until the end of the book with until, Rochester. Mm -hmm. And that was her final, like, she gave in to her, her passions. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was kind of the beginning of us seeing her mm -hmm. choose reason always over passion, because passion would always mm -hmm. get her in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. yep. mm -hmm. all throughout her childhood, up until, like, she was 10 when we first met up with her, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, like, a ten-year-old is, like, being told that her personality, her tendencies are wrong. Mm -hmm. Her feelings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think had there not been a red room, maybe she still would have been treated the same, but I don't know. I just feel like she would have turned out different in the whole passion versus reason thing. That's would a good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could Jane have turned out different if she never encountered the red room? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, where's the... Do we consider the red room to be like the root of her repression? I her do. Emotions? Yeah. I personally think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That I, single experience. Yeah, because she got forced to be in that room because of her passion. Because she, she was lashed vocal. out. Right. She was vocal. Not even lashed mm -hmm. out, but she, she just stood up for herself right. or said things that people didn't like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And that pretty much taught her that she needs to stay quiet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, like, because she's so afraid of something like that happening to her again in the future. Or just, like, she just keeps going back to, like, oh, what happened when I did speak out. Mm -hmm. Right. Or even, even the getting out of the Red Room, getting out of Gate's head, also gave her power and taught her how to, like, stand mm. up for herself anyways like even yeah. if she was shut in places like St. John can we do we call him St. John or St. John? St. John okay. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> St. John's so much faster to say. Yeah but it's St. John. I don't, St. John. I don't hear it. John. John. I, read it John. John. Yeah. I won't register you can say it but I won't register it as okay. St. John. <laughs> All right yeah. Um anyways so he kind of tried to trap her, well, in a way, I think she saw it as trapping herself in marriage, mm -hmm. and he tried and tried and tried, and but she, like, kept saying, no, I'm not getting married, I'm not getting married to you, I'm not getting married to you, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. things like that. Like, even when she was a child, she didn't give in to others when they shut her in. Mm -hmm. Like, she had her own voice, mm -hmm. still. And back to that question, if she would have been different without the Red Room, I feel like, say there was no physical Red Room in the house, Mrs. Reed still would have treated her the same. She just wouldn't have been able to shut her up in a room, mm -hmm. you know. And, but I think that room itself, the confinement of it, really reinforced that in her, like mm -hmm. instilled that reason in her. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like it, even if Miss Reed treated her the same, the room really had a powerful impact on I don't her. think that... Um... Wait, no, I do think that it, like, had, like, that impact that changed her because of the supernatural element to it, mm -hmm. and that's where that started, and, like, that's where the whole fear. Mm -hmm. She learned that she doesn't want anyone ever to do that to her again. She doesn't mm -hmm. want to be trapped in a marriage or no. anything. Mm -hmm. So she mm -hmm. learned relationship. that she needs to stand up for herself. She needs to not let other people walk all over her, mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. in a way. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, how about Lowood? Low. <laughs> Lowood. Yeah, all of the names of the places represent kind of mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. they were to Jane, almost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Lowood was a very low place in her life. And Thornfield Hall just sounds like prickly and like stuck and not mm -hmm. a good place to be. Like, yeah, I think you like find that. trapped. Mm -hmm. She did have good... She had good experiences, though, sometimes, too. When Rochester was there. Well, yeah, but the overall essence of Thornfield isn't necessarily the best. I mean, Rochester even hated it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But since, like, you know, Rochester, like, represents Thornfield, mm -hmm. like, when he's not there, it's not... It's more Thornfield when yeah. he's not there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then when he's there, the place is more like Rochester. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which even then, I'd still say... Rochester has that kind of, like, prickly mm -hmm. yeah. bit about him, yeah. especially, yeah. like, when him and Jane first converse, because yeah. he's, trying to, he's trying to get her to talk about things, and she's like, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. What do you want to hear? Mm -hmm. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm choking on chocolate. <laughs> um, the thing with Lowood, um, I don't know. Again, you just find that in the name a lot. And that's where she meets Helen, right yeah. mm -hmm. and helen had this i like ideology of like being submissive submissive to everybody and like giving in mm -hmm. and i think at the time jane thought that was kind of what she wanted to be and that's why it was such a low point for her because she like was almost giving in to like, being passive ego. yeah mm -hmm. i don't think it's it's her alter ego i think it's more her foil because Helen. It, it highlights how passionate she is. Mm -hmm. They're she, very different, which makes them a foil. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. It, it mistemples uh, the alter ego mm -hmm. this in, Jane, that, in that place. Because Jane wants to be more like mm -hmm. Miss Temple. Oh, like, Miss mm -hmm. Temple's like the superior, like, advanced plus version of Jane. Okay. And, alright, I, I, see, I see what you're saying. Because she's yeah. so mm -hmm. smart, she, like, she... Does she stick up to Brocklehurst? Yeah, but yeah. she didn't care what Brocklehurst said. He, he's like, you gotta cut her hair, you gotta do this, and she's like, whatever. Like, she didn't, like, argue him, but she wasn't mm -hmm. gonna do any of that. Mm -hmm. And Helen, um, just 
highlighted how Jane isn't. And I think that's a very necessary part of the book, um, having Helen at Lowood with her. Mm-hmm. Is it it shapes Jane's character yeah, it gives the other an alternative. way. Or like the same way that she's trying to go. She doesn't end up like Helen and that's you need that in the book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause she sees that like her passion is like has only ever gotten her in trouble and Helen's like so mighty in her own morality that she's so reserved that mm. that's like the only thing Jane wants to be mm-hmm. because Helen doesn't get in trouble because of her passion well yeah. Helen does she does in get trouble, in trouble but but not. she doesn't stick up to she's like yes I did that I was wrong oh, yeah because she's messy yeah yeah and she's like I know I'm messy and I'm willing to like take the punishment because mm-hmm. I'm messy yeah like I know she's that like, that's she's why. very I'm in the wrong like an 11 year old yeah <laughs> And she's like, I'm in the wrong, I'm at fault, you are my superior, I'm going to listen to you and give in to you. It's, like, so creepy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, she doesn't like, ever stick up for language. herself. Yeah. Yeah. But, and then Jane, I think she realizes, she's like, maybe I want to be like Helen, but then she's like, uh-uh. Like, mm-hmm. and then that's when she then leaves Lowood. Yeah, she realizes she, gets she out. can't be like Helen, because yeah. that's not who she is. Mm-hmm. And from there, she goes to Thornfield, right? From mm-hmm. Lowood, yep. yes. Yeah, because mm-hmm. yeah, she gives her advertisement. So that was a very powerful setting for her. If she hadn't gone to Lowood, I don't think... I think that was very necessary. A uh, mm-hmm. good part of the book. It was very much a growing point for her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or like a self-realization, not even growing, because she didn't really change. She thought about changing herself to be more like Helen. But she yeah. ended up just like... It's not even character... De- I guess it is character development in a way, but she really continued funny. developing that personality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just, she's a, almost a constantly moving character. Mm-hmm. So much so, but she like is more moving towards within herself. She's moving in one direction within herself. It right. just gets more and more firm mm-hmm. every Same place that she places. goes. Each place gets better and better for her, I guess. Because mm-hmm. like, like the oh. first place was horrible and it like sticks with her throughout her entire life yeah and then Lowood she did have bad experiences there but it wasn't as bad as it was life. better yeah and then Thornfield she learned more and grew, and grew more and and Miss Fairfax was her. nice to her like right. she had a decent other than like Bertha and like all like the darkness of, like just the feeling of Thornfield it wasn't terrible I guess and she liked Rochester enough and then she had like a pretty good experience at the Moore house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She yeah, really vibes with everybody. Yeah, because family. Yeah. Right. I think that's one that's of the huge. biggest things about yeah, this book. that, like, she finds belonging. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She finds her place, almost, mm-hmm. in society, I want to say, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because that was almost so difficult for her when she became a governess. Because she was highly educated, so she should belong upper class, but then she, within that household, she was like a servant. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that the name Morehouse, like, because the last one was like wood and then field, and it's like outside, outside of her, and then house. It's like her place. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. And I'm also looking, I was just about to bring that up too. The, like, if you're thinking of Thornfield, like, it's very like, and low wood. But then this is more. This is something the further her. It's like a place where she belongs. It's more of what she wants. Mm-hmm. It's better people. She wants a home. She grows within her religion, her like knowledge of things. She's learning new languages. She has better people in her mm-hmm. corner. Social life. It's mm-hmm. it's more. And she has a better job. Mm-hmm. Everything's just more and more and more of what she's going for. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think that makes her realize that, that she, she wants, wants Rochester. Rochester. Mm-hmm. I was just gonna say yeah. that. Yeah. All of that more stuff that she gets, she's like, all right, I'm, I like this, but this is where I need I to be. I know what I Do really want. Do you think want. that Thornfield burning down represents her own mind? I think it represents Rochester being, yeah, coming crippled. Yeah, Thornfield is more, right, Thornfield Rochester. is Rochester. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, it, and that rebirth, I think, because it talks about the plants being grown up. Mm -hmm. in the ashes is like him realizing of Jane and like accepting her plainness and like Mm -hmm. like her wanting to be her own independent thing and not be trapped in marriage Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the instant we found out that Thornfield burned to the ground I I I I saw that Rochester was gonna be broken in a way too and he was Mm -hmm. broken physically because of his hand and his eyes 
And I, I really like the end, how he gains his sight back with Jane. Because mm-hmm. he doesn't oh, gain his yeah. sight until Jane's yeah. back. And then he's yeah. like, are you wearing a blue dress? And she's like, oh my oh. god. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, is that a necklace you're wearing? And she's like, oh my god. And like he starts to see her for what she is. He had to lose her to be able to see her. Yeah. And I think it's interesting. And how he had she... to like break down. Yeah. yeah. I like, think it's interesting how she started wearing that stuff once he couldn't see her. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. like, like, like when the she... jewelry and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. It's for and then, herself. Yeah, it's yeah. for herself, yeah. not for anyone else. Because yeah. it was almost like he was pushing these things onto her because mm-hmm. he thought she would look beautiful in them. Yeah. And it was more, she saw it more for Rochester than Alex. Like, I'm, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering mm-hmm. if Rochester hadn't been blind, if she would have still. I think she would have because it, as she would have gotten it with her own money. Mm-hmm. It would have been like her True. own means. Yeah. And it would have been on her terms regardless at that point in the book because mm-hmm. even if Rochester hadn't been blind, hadn't been crippled, I feel like she still would have been at a place where she wants to get those things for herself. Mm-hmm. And she knows them. And Rochester wants her back so badly, he's like almost willing to like let her be herself mm-hmm. and like accept yeah. her for her. Mm-hmm. And I also think Thornfield burning and him moving into that other little cottage or wherever he ends up there at the end was necessary because if he still lived in Thornfield, he would have been the same. Same. Yeah. And Jane would have gone there and she wouldn't have been the one to ask him to marry her, her or like want to marry him. And you know, mm-hmm. like she'd still feel trapped. But because Thornfield is physically completely gone and it's this new place, it's brand new, it's fresh, there's no Bertha, there's no like mm-hmm. feeling of. There's her no doing something wrong. Superstition. Bertha's gone. Thornfield's gone. Everybody else is gone that knows her. And it's just this fresh... And he can't see. He's a new person. And I think that's very necessary. Yeah. The it's setting. Almost, it's almost like the blindness. And like... It like makes Jane... I don't know what I'm trying to say, but like... Like... Rochester just loves Jane for like herself. Yeah. Not just her beauty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he like sees he, her as she is on the inside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And back to Thornfield, the chestnut tree, from the very start when it got struck by lightning and it, like fell over, whatever happened to it, the roots were still in the ground. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I think that re- reestablishes their... Yeah. yeah. And then mm-hmm. he, them getting together. I think it's Rochester that's compared back to it. He compares himself to yeah. it. Yeah, because he's wounded. Like that. He's wounded. Mm-hmm. It's like he mm-hmm. got hit by lightning in a way. Yeah. It's like he lost his hand, he lost his sight, he lost everything, and he's just, but he's still kind of there, you know, like the, like the tree is. Mm-hmm. I think with the blindness thing, like we were saying, like, when he's blind, he can, like, finally see, ki- finally see Jane. I feel like Jane can finally see herself with that, too. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. She's not being looked at yeah. like mm-hmm. an object or like a, like a thing to have or gain yeah. possession that's what, of. That's what Sinjin wanted her to be, basically. Mm-hmm. Just like an object to accompany him. Because he, like, I could mm-hmm. go on this forever, mm-hmm. but like he was so adamant that like she had to be his wife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That like he that title right like she, she he couldn't explain that like just just like a sibling he never accepted her as a sibling no that, that's all she wanted and even though he said I could see you as a sibling I could find space mm-hmm. in my heart there's like something he's like I could find room in my heart for you it's like gee thanks just he like, never tried no mm-hmm. he never made the effort like mm-hmm. she's no longer enclosed mm-hmm. she can be free like without without anyone with her like. Yeah, I mean, in Morehouse, though, she was kind of in clothes, kind of trapped, almost, right. under St. Jin's arm, mm-hmm. because she felt like she had to... Please him. Right. Mm-hmm. She wanted him to be happy, which goes back to, like, her being a child, and, like, mm-hmm. always wanting to please people. Mm-hmm. Because, mm-hmm. like, she she learned the language that he was learning, because he wanted a partner, mm-hmm. and, like instead of what she really wanted to learn with her other sisters, Mm -hmm. which is German, and, like, do all these things. And he, like, he... (laughs) (laughs) He, like, he, like, told her, like, you're going on a walk with me. Uh Yeah. It was, that was awful. And then he was, like, gaslighting her at one point. I need to find the quote, but, Mm -hmm. like, 
And while you're looking for the quote, I think every place that she goes, even though she still tries to please people, it gets less and less every time. Like, even at Morehouse, mm -hmm. when she want, like she was trying to please him, she could have easily up and left, and, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't have, like, attacked her or anything. You know, he's, he's not, like, Rochester, like, in the physical, dominant way. Yeah. He's just kind of, he's just kind of a jerk and, like, yeah. standoffish. He'll give you, like, the cold shoulder or, like, ugh. Like, she... I don't know. I feel like she's a little more free every place that she goes. Because mm -hmm. she's... In a way. She becomes more solid within herself, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, like, on a different note, the very end where St. John is, like, reaching out to God and is about to die, I don't really get it. I, I think it's representing her choosing Rochester over being stuck with him and him dying reinforces the fact that she is a free Wait, independent so he woman. Did die? Yeah. Oh thank God. Wait. <laughs> thank God. In his letter he's like, I'm closer to God. I like I can mm -hmm. see Jesus. Like he's like going up. <laughs> like, I wish it went into graphic detail of him dying. <laughs> oh my I, I think, <laughs> no, I hate him so much. He's a, like an abuser. <laughs> this like, is a family friendly podcast. <laughs> Um, no, I found the quote. Okay. And she's like, he I says, we must marry, I repeat it. And she's like, no, like I offered you, I'll go with you as a friend, as a, as a companion, as, as a like sister. your equal. Yeah, because she can, right. and he won't have it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. Says, yeah, I think it's just. Is it like control? the times, yeah. I think it's like his personality, because he knows that she won't leave him if he, if she's her his property. Right. Mm -hmm. She can't, because divorces weren't like a thing back then, no. were they? No. That's why Bertha was still not. around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have a question for the full group here. Yeah. Um. Do you think her getting her uncle's inheritance, that money, like reinforced in herself that she's independent? Do you think that had anything to do with it? Yeah. Like, knowing that she had physical, tangible value. Like, she knew she had value in herself, but she had, the, like, the money to stand with her, and maybe that's why she was, like, so open to not going with him and, like, going back to Rochester, but she knew yeah. she could support herself. I think it put, it gave her her legs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to say, mm -hmm. to, like, stand up for herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that that physical value reinsured within herself that she actually does have value mm -hmm. and like you know did give her her legs and she puts herself mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. she wouldn't have like I feel like if she didn't have that she would a be stuck in that school the whole time and not have the courage to go find Rochester yeah. and then she would maybe be convinced by Sinjin to like be forced net. into that marriage yeah. right mm -hmm. it was like okay I can do whatever I want I can go be happy with Rochester mm -hmm. I don't have to be stuck being a missionary which she knows she knows in herself that she wouldn't be good for it I don't no. think she would have anyways yeah she definitely. had money or not because like she's been in low places mm -hmm. like, yeah she, when she was in the woods she was like yeah and even if she had to stay in the school I think she would have stayed mm -hmm. if she if he wouldn't have let her go and without she, being married to him yeah she left rochester without anything mm -hmm. yeah so she's very i feel like she's very open to like making her choices no matter the cost and like, sticking to them yeah, yeah. She so didn't. you don't think the money had anything to do with it i'm just i'm i i feel like she would have stayed at the school mm -hmm. longer to get yeah. more money get and then feet. go, maybe? Mm-hmm. Because she wouldn't let herself just stay there forever. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm And I also think her getting the money and divvying it up between St. John and the two sisters there mm -hmm. is really... It's not character development because she's always had that in her, like, the kindness, but it just reinstates um, who she is as a person. Like, she doesn't want people to be left out in the cold like she has been her entire life. Mm -hmm. So her, like, divvying up the money. I think she's selfless. Definitely. She sure. wanted the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like, for, like, I didn't think it was so much of a selfless act as it was that she wanted to have, like, this, um, a gesture that convinced them that, them she, that she was about. worthy of their affection as a family mm -hmm. and that, that she cared about them and that she cared about them and so like that was her showing it and like yeah. 
They're her priority. And then it's also, I think, her personality that she never wants anyone to just give her anything. Like, even when she was at Uh, her lowest point, she was trying to, like, she wasn't just begging. She was trying to, like, trade things or look for work. Mm -hmm. It was was her repaying them for, like, Mm -hmm. bringing her into their house Mm -hmm. and And, saving her. Yeah, and how... Mm -hmm. Um, when she goes back to Gateshead, when Mrs. Reed dies, Mm -hmm. she, Rochester tries to, like, give her less than, give her more. I thought it was less. More than Because she said then, yeah. But, like, she wants what she earns. Yeah, she's Mm -hmm. like, I'm only taking this, keep this, and I go mad about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, when she was, she wasn't, like, when she was kind of begging, like, when she left, Thornfield and before Morehouse, uh, she went out to that one door, and they gave her a piece of bread and closed the door on her. She, she thought about knocking again, but she didn't, just because she knew she couldn't be able to repay them. You know what I mean? Like they had like she was gonna ask for a something. place to stay, right. and they like threw a piece of bread at her and closed the door, and she's like, uh, and then she just kept going. She didn't mm-hmm. try to like, you know what I mean? Yeah. She didn't. Try she didn't want to inconvenience them again. How mm-hmm. long was she out there? couple days. Three days. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of weird because wasn't like the the coach ride back to Thornfield like six hours? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. She no, actually like traveled. 36, wasn't it? She mm-hmm. traveled for a while. It wasn't she that She traveled long. a long time. No, because it said she left like Tuesday and got there like Thursday morning. Really? Yeah. What? I didn't, I don't think a... it was that long. And then it took her a while to get back to Rochester, like his mm-hmm. other house. Mm-hmm. You know how we were talking about how each place was better than the last? Do you mm-hmm. think that when she was, like, alone for a few days, was that better than being enclosed? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even when she was struggling, she did that on her own time, her yeah. own free will. Yeah, her own terms. Nobody kicked her out, and she did that to herself, and I think she needed that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Even though she was starving, she still had herself. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, all, what she always has with I her. was surprised at how... Obviously, she wasn't s- completely sane when she was starving, but, like, how level-headed she was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was composed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I didn't, I don't think if she lacked that in herself, she'd be able to survive that long. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. lack that perseverance and lack that personality mm-hmm. in herself. If mm-hmm. she didn't have herself, if she felt like a shell of a person, she would not have made it. Yeah. And I think that was a necessary part of the book, too, seeing her out like that. That kind of goes with, like, her character development, like, because, like, she's, like, is going with her own mind mm-hmm. instead of with other people's. I found the quote. It was a journey of six and thirty hours. I set oh. up from Woodcroft's on a Tuesday afternoon, and early on the succeeding Thursday morning, the coach stopped to the water, the horses at the wayside inn. I think the Didn't six she... and thirty hours means six and a half hours. No. Oh, wait. That makes sense. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, if it was a Tuesday to a Thursday, that would be like. She did hours. take a coach from. I yeah, way, from Thornfield. Like when she first, cause she traded. Oh something. yeah, she went to Wh- Whitcross. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Do you guys mind if I change the subject a little? Go for it. What's her passion, do you think? If you had to... Or do you think there are multiple passions? Mm. Because I mark things, like, throughout my book, like, all these sticking up the pink ones, passion versus reason. I don't know if her passion just is her sticking up for herself or if it's Rochester or if... I like, think, what's her passion? I think her passions think? are her true feelings. Because she's so I, expressive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's so... She goes, like, all in when she mm-hmm. loves someone. I think her passion is her wings. Like, being able to escape. And being able to, like... Make her Fly away. Wings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like the feeling thing. Like, 
how that kind of sums up all the passions that I marked. You know, like she has feelings about Rochester. She has feelings about who she wants to be. Mm-hmm. Her yeah. passion is following what she wants to do, I think. Mm-hmm. Or who she wants say? to be with. Yeah. Or whatever the scenario is. Okay. I think caring for people came to mind. Mm-hmm. Like how she cares for Adele and how she cared for Helen and Miss Rochester. And how. And ultimately how she cared about, like, her family that she found. Mm -hmm. And then that, she's like, wow, I want Rochester to be my family. Yeah, Mm -hmm. like, she even cared about St. John, Mm -hmm. even though he was an awful, awful awful person. She wanted to please him so bad, but she was like, I can't please you. Right. No matter how, because I need to do what I need to do. It was so frustrating because he only thinks what's right for him is right for everybody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is infuriating, because he's like, everyone has to be a servant for God. Uh-huh. And, like, they must push themselves to the limit and constantly suffer. Mm-hmm. And Jane doesn't want that. She knows she can't do that. Yeah. She she's knows like, she can be happy with her religion without having to do that. Mm-hmm. The way you hate him. <laughs> I despise him. I like how she just, she said she was going on a trip. She mm-hmm. come back and in she four like, days. She was like, like I'm oh. moving in <laughs> with Mr. Ro- or with Rochester. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I love how she like still kept in contact with her sisters and still even with St. John. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. he like wrote to her, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's so forgiving. Mm-hmm. Like she forgave Rochester like instantly. Yeah. yeah. And she mm-hmm. ends up with him at the end despite all odds in mm-hmm. a way. I think at the mm-hmm. end, the passion versus reason, like it ends that her passion is reasonable. Oh, yeah. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, the whole book, it's like a constant battle passion, reason, passion, reason. And at the end, they just kind of level out. Yeah. And it's like they're on the same page, mm-hmm. like you said. And like you were asking, like, what is her passion? I think that her passion is her dreams, but her also, like, also her dreams is to pursue her passion. Mm-hmm. It's her desire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's giving her desire, into her desires. Right. To be herself mm-hmm. and be happy knowing her. Mm-hmm. And, and that's definitely it. character development for her. Mm-hmm. How she gives into her passion at the end. Mm-hmm. Like and that. Her passions aren't unreasonable. No. They're she just discovers. everyday things. Yeah, she yeah. discovers that, like, but for the what time the world, period, I can do. I can do this because it's like I can make it work. The fact that she can make her passions work, even like mm-hmm. when she was in the woods, she can. Well, I'm not sure if it was her that saved her, but I think she, she did herself save her. She did plead a lot to mm-hmm. Hannah. Was Diana. That? Hannah. Oh the, yeah, Hannah. The. The. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the feminist. Uh, aspect of the book also goes in with passion versus reason like her her passions are like what we we look at it and we're like well that's easy like that's a like make your decision make up your mind but for the time period that was like not mm-hmm. it yeah <laughs> women were seen as objects and had to be like constrained and, and I think binded within their social mm-hmm. groups that's what makes the book so significant is because it's ordinary mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. she steps through and like it is feminist Uh uh-huh it's not like this big revolution like oh my god it's like just herself right it's so one little person changing not she didn't change the world obviously she just she changed herself and that's one small step for an an important step (laughs) and (laughs) i have a point would you like to say it interesting um i thought it was interesting that sinjin was the one who brought her in Mm-hmm. Like, he was yeah. the one who saw her. And that's so... Because at first the sisters were like, mm. <laughs> No, the sisters didn't see her, because Hannah wouldn't let him see her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But Hannah... Sinjin was, like, got home, and he was like, Hannah, what's going on? And let her like, in. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, let her in, what the heck? Yeah. And I thought that was interesting. But that uh-huh. might just be because of his religion. Yeah, I yeah, think so, it definitely would be. It's like, he does all these things to put himself at a higher morality above these people he's helping. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And I think that's why he expected her to go with him, because he saved her. And, like, maybe he's yeah. like, I just saved you like, from you the cold. Like, you have to repay me. Like, you, 
and you're gonna serve God like I served you type of a thing. Yeah. Like I I saved you, and I don't know what I'm trying to say. I don't. Do you think I, I like get it. his death represents like the end of her struggles? Mm, I don't think so. I no. think it represents her independence, like fi- like legit. Cause that was the. She's always was... been independent, right? But then she left him. It was mm. it was a last struggle for her fighting for her independence mm-hmm. within right. the book. Yeah, so kind of in a way. Okay. I also think Rochester and Saint John are boils. Yeah. Because no, for sure they. Because are. Rochester develops. He changes. Like, mm-hmm. sure, he had to, like, burn and, like, <laughs> go blind and lose a hand and, like, cry in his room for a while and call out to her in the night, but he changed. St. John's just, like, Jesus. <laughs> like, he yeah. doesn't really develop. He, he's he just can, kind of a jerk. He yeah, absorbs yeah. all this information, but it just goes out the one ear, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Because his beliefs like, are so strong in right. himself. He, he only applies things that apply to his what he thinks. And I think that's how Rochester used to be. Like, he's very like, I'm right, you're wrong, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, but St. John would not let that go. And another difference between them, um, is that Rochester was more physical and, like, possessive at first, and St. John was more, um... Restrained. Just not press. like he was just passive and vocal. Uh huh. Like verbally possessive. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. And mm-hmm. like he made you feel the guilt. Rochester was like, I will use violence. I will try violence or whatever. I think, I think that was just like a last attempt. Definitely. Like, like, but he would have done it. You think? I Rochester think would have done it. Acting on like. On his anger. Uh huh. Yeah. But Saint John didn't even threat like that. He didn't threaten no. her. I think because he saw himself as he did threaten her. Well, not in a physical way. He was more manipulative. About he was it. like God's right. gonna. Kind of, yeah, he used throw her around. religion against him, mm-hmm. against her. Yeah. To like mm-hmm. guilt trip her. Yeah, definitely. And gaslight her, because he was like the quote I found earlier. He was like, "I I did nothing to do deserve this scorn that you're saying." Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's like, "Oh my God." Yeah, really. Mm-hmm. Evil huh. man. Evil, evil man. <laughs> evil man. I was gonna say something else. Mm. Well, one thing I found interesting because the foil I feel like is very, like it's very representative of passion versus re- reason. Mm-hmm. Rochester is definitely passion. Saint John is obviously reason. Mm-hmm. And um, well, I like that. one of the things, uh, interesting things uh, with their com- their foil. One of the big differences is their physical appearance. Yeah. And why even, like, Rochester is emotion, and he's portrayed as, like, ugly. Mm-hmm. And St. John is reason, and mm-hmm. he's beautiful. Yeah. It's, like, what Jane wants it to be. Mm-hmm. Like, she sees her reason as, uh-huh. like, something that's beautiful and passion that's ugly. And I love how Jane is, like, yeah, he is a little funky looking, but I just, there's something about him. Uh-huh. And you see that from the start when she first meets him. Mm-hmm. And she's, like, descri- you know how she describes all the people that she meets in, like, extreme unnecessary detail Mm -hmm. well she's like going on and on about how he kind of looked a little weird and like that drawing that she did her sister's like that look or her cousin (laughs) it's like like, that's an ugly dude and (laughs) jane's like but i love him like Mm -hmm. not you know what i mean not like that but Mm -hmm. she wasn't that outright about it but i think that that like shows like (laughs) jane's character (laughs) because like saint john's kind of like idealistic like He's religious, mm-hmm. he's mm-hmm. handsome, and he wants he wants to marry her. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Rochester, when she goes back to Rochester, he's blind, kind of ugly, but... Right. Does it have a he's hand? Even more ugly. Yeah. yeah. She calls him, like, a, a eagle and a vulture. <laughs> yeah. And he compares himself to a vulture, and he's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, I, love, Jesus. I love how they bond over that at the end. Now they're just kind of both, like, attacking him. Like, he's attacking himself. He's like, yeah, I'm ugly. What are you doing? But she's like, yeah, you look kind of funky. That. She chooses the more... And I love that. Yeah. I feel like St. John's, like, that guy that's, like, very attractive, and you're just like, I like that a lot. But then it's like, but he's a jerk. Like, like yeah. you know... he's a Chad. He's an empty fuck. <laughs> <inside. laughs> yeah. And then there's this other guy, and it's like, He's alright, but he <laughs> but he has so much heart and soul. He's such a good guy. Like he's you know, I and I just love that how Jane settles she doesn't even settle. 
She no. picks. Oh, she yeah. does pick. She, she picks the uglier guy her because he's better. Happy, her own happiness. Yeah. She knows she would be miserable with St. John. Oh, definitely. She knows that marriage would just be, she would just be an object and she would just be trapped. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You find like, something? If she were to just choose reason, how <laughs> horrible she would feel. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is her really, like, her character growth really shows throughout the book. Mm-hmm. She yeah. knows by then that her reason is, is wrong in that case. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think we've touched a little bit on everything, <sighs> so should we close this episode and start the yeah. next, like, mm-hmm. recap yeah. final? Yeah, okay. let's get it. All right. Ooh. See ya. Bye. <laughs> we gotta do a, the little, uh, the last time we oh, did the... Um, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Don't step on the chocolate. I'm not stepping on your chalk. <laughs> <laughs> chocolate. <laughs> Wait. Jane Hour.